Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, now, now, you want to go back and sit with your mum now? That's the idea. Off you go. I'm not at all happy about this. Albert's been our virgin for 16 years. Damn good one, too. No, we've no complaints, except on this one issue, which is more of a misfortune than a failing. Mm. What shall we do without Millie? Neither of them will take it easily. This church has been their life. Page 243. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith are baptized on the understanding that they are brought up as Christians within the family of the church. What's all this then? The plans for converting the crypt. Our new man certainly gets things done. The town's changing. He'd say the church must change with it. But he won't change Albert. That I'll tell you. Uh, Mr. Dobson, would you come into the restroom for a moment? We have something to say to you. Very good, sir. But Mrs. Dobson, would you join us? I asked two of our church wardens to be present because what I have to say is the result of a joint decision, not mine alone. You understand that? Yes, sir. They were as surprised as I had been to hear what I had to tell them. I have discovered, and how I found out doesn't matter, I have discovered that you, Mr. Dobson, can neither read nor write. Well, the last speaker knew that, sir. He said it didn't make any difference. Have you ever tried to learn to read? I started in service when I was a lad, sir. You didn't need to read and write to clean shoes and polish the silver. I rose to be a butler, sir, to Lord Whisper. My wife was his cook. After we got married, she tried to teach me. And he could have learned, but he had too much to do. Well, Mr Dobson, this may have been all right in the past, but we have plans for this church to make it as much a community centre as a place of worship. We're putting a telephone in the crypt. Now, we'd expect our verger to help answer it, give out numbers and addresses, liaise with the social services in cases of need. I don't think that with your handicap, Mr. Dobson, you could quite manage that, could you? Are you trying to tell me, sir, that my services are no longer required? Mrs. Dobson, couldn't you have another go at teaching him? Just enough so he could take down messages and so on. Well, I... I tried to teach my wife to drive. Absolute disaster. There are classes in literacy for late learners at the Adult Education College. They're enrolling now. Won't you give it a try, Albert? Excuse me. Oh, excuse me, could you tell me the way to add out literacy? Back already? They finish early. Write me a letter. I'm just doing my pace. Write me a letter now. Don't four. What's up with you? I've only got one pair of hands. Just stop yarring and do what I tell you. Bert, what has got into you? That women college, that's what got into me. At my age to be taught how to read, that cat sat on the mat by a chit of a girl young enough to be my granddaughter. She didn't even have the modesty to wear a brassiere. Well, that's it, I'm resigning. You what? I'm resigning as Berger. Resigning? Yes, now write that letter. Well, if you're not staying, nor am I. Treating you like this. I'll make the letter from me, too. We'd miss the church, though, after all these years. We'd go balmy, stuck here in the house all day. And I'll go balmy in that bird case they call a college. Never. You write that letter. Ah, oh, Mr. Dobson, can I help you? I've left you a letter. Oh, well, don't rush off. Uh, tell me how your lesson went. You started today, didn't you? The letter contains my resignation and that of my wife. Oh, no, no, no. Don't let's be hasty about this. I know when I'm not wanted. Well, if that's the way you feel...
Yes. Uh, a pot of tea, please. No thought. Only mugs. Very well, a mug. Short-sighted. Could you tell me what that sign says? Uh, Lisa, sir. And the agents? Uh, Wallace and Coon. Why don't you get yourself some glasses? Thank you. Did you leave the letter? Yes, I did. I saw the vicar, too. And what did he say? <laughs> I conveyed to him what I thought of him. Oh, Victoria Barnes. Um... Do you remember the teas we used to serve in the old days when his lordship had company? You won't see the like of them nowadays. All people have is shop cakes in front of the telly. Tea out of bags. Plastic on the table instead of Irish linen. His lordship always liked to start with cucumber sandwiches. Crumpets and muffins in the winter. And should be toast when he came back from hunting. Hot butter tea cakes with cinnamon. Brandy snaps with cream filling. My macaroons. Meringues. Eclairs. You know, there's nowhere anywhere near the high street where you can get a decent cup of tea, let alone a proper tea like we're talking of. No one wants it. They're rushing home from the supermarket to switch on the video. Well, I don't know. After all, this is a tourist town, you know. Lots of Americans and coach parties. I, um, I saw an empty shop today. All right. Yeah, between the cathedral and the castle. It was a short lease. I went to the agents. What are you talking about, leases and agents? Millie, listen. What would you think of you and me opening a proper tea room? A what? With cloth on the table and a pot of tea instead of a cup, and your baking and my idea of service. You have gone balmy. It'd take all our savings. I'm sure it would work. They'd be queuing up for your macaroons. It's too risky going into business at our time of life. Other people do it. Just think of it, you and me. I'm sure it would work if we pull together. Macaroons is too much of a fiddle. I could do my Chelsea chocolate fingers, though. Assorted cup saucers and plates. Ooh. Got from the junk shop near the station. Thirty quid the lot. Now, where are we? It, um, it says something on this one, but I don't suppose it makes any difference. India and Oriental Steamship Company. Oh. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that nervous. I'm all fingers and thumbs. <laughs> nervous? You cooked dinners when we sat down thirty at table, not counting family. The money I'm worried about. All our savings. Up, please. Oh, what's it for? It's called Jumble, sir. Oh, very well.
Good afternoon, sir. Cup tea, please. Wouldn't you prefer a pot, sir? Much more civilised. Oh, what? Uh, yes. Yes, thanks. Indian or China, sir? Oh, Indian, I suppose. Little anchovy toast as an appetizer, sir? Oh, just a pastry, please. Certainly, sir. <coughs> Good Lord. <laughs> well, uh, I'll have um, one of those and... Uh... Yeah, one of those, please. May I recommend the Sandringham sponge, sir? Oh? Very light. Well, perhaps, uh... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Certainly, sir. Excuse me, sir. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Freshly made, sir. Oh? If you just let it stand for about four minutes, it should be perfect. Oh, right. Good afternoon, sir. Do sit down, madam. Nice for the sun again. Now then, tea for tea, was it? You didn't know, John. They've never applied for planning permission for change of use. Serving area is well below standard. And they're making food for public sale and consumption in their private residence, which hasn't been inspected or approved for the purpose. And my department could apply to you for a closure order tomorrow. They did a lot for the church. Couldn't we give them a bit of time? I'll let you know when I've inspected the kitchen they use for their home baking. Good day to you. Forficula auricularia. An earwig, Mrs. Dobson. Well, what do you expect with the graveyard round the corner? There are also traces of mouse droppings. We lost our cat. I was going to get some poison. I shall have to report an infestation. In his lordship's kitchen, we had puppies, kittens. Yeah. He got him to come in for the crumbs. Yes, well. Now, this preparation surface. I've had that pastry board 30 years. We would prefer a laminate. Have you ever tried making puff pastry on a laminate, whatever it is? Are there alternative facilities for hand washing? Alter. Oh, you mean another tap? This is through there in the bathroom. Baths are taken adjacent to food preparation area, where personal clothing is hung to dry. Well, I think that's all, Mr. Dobson. You'll be hearing from the Department of Environmental Health in due course. I can't say my report will be favourable. I'm sorry, Mrs Dobson, but I have a job to do, and it is for the protection of the public. I'll see myself out. Protecting the public from us? Me that's cooked for royalty, being inspected by him. Try finding somewhere else to fit in with their rules and regulations. Where's the money to come from? I'm afraid you weren't at all well advised when you took this policy out. They used to call every week when we were in service. Isn't it any good? Oh, it's worth something, of course, and I'll certainly get a surrender value for you. But it won't be nearly enough to start another shop, not one that satisfies all the regulations. If you found a suitable freehold property, you could use this as a down payment on a mortgage. And I'm sure we at the bank would help. But it's a gamble, Albert. This is your only security against old age, so think very carefully before you cash it in. I think we'll take the gamble, sir. Headband straight, Mary. That's it. And apron strings tied in the middle, Martha. What do you think, Mr. Dobson? Hmm. Slip showing out of the dress. Now then, girls, have you learnt your three P's? 
Punctuality. Politeness. Personal appearance. And don't you ever forget them. So, just my check, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a very enjoyable afternoon tea. Thank you, sir. Is Mr. Dobson here? No, sir. He's in one of our other shops. You mean you have other branches? Two now, sir. And another opening in a month. Is that so? Do many Americans come in here? Oh, yes, lots. They really enjoy the tea we serve at Dobson's. <laughs> I bet they do. Tell me something. Have you ever heard of Grandma's Cookies? Sir? Grandma's Cookies. Afraid not, sir. <laughs> you will, miss. I can promise you that. <laughs> ah, choir will be going in now. Do you remember how I used to check them for clean handkerchiefs and dirty fingernails? <laughs> Wonder who'll get the flowers this Sunday. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Oh, but I can't make head or tail of this one. It's from Grandma's Cookies to the President, Dobson's Tea Rooms, Inc. <laughs> Dear Sir, we are, as you will be aware, a prestige-orientated, image-conscious catering consortium with outlets in 27 US cities. We have examined with interest your company in the UK and are interested in the possibility of expanding your operation within our own organization. Our Mr. Gruber will be at Claridge's Hotel in London from... Oh, but what does this mean? You don't think they're trying to take us over, do you? I don't know, love. I think we'd better go and find out what he's up to. OK, so uh, we were planning to have all of these outlets operational by the fall and lift off of the Canadian subsidiary soon after. Now, we have a very attractive logo here based on Nellie's very beautiful smile. <laughs> and for our menu, I like this uh, to you, Albert. Not bad, huh? <laughs> now, for the jacket of the book, we thought a picture of you both serving tea to a typical English family. A book? Gee whiz, didn't I tell you? Harry, I thought I said... Help me, sir. I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, we intend to tie in with a mail-order publishing firm for Mrs. Dobson's Tea Time Cookbook. What do you think of that, Albert? If you're saying you want to buy us out, we're not selling. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. We want you to carry on just the way you are, and we want the right to do the same thing in the States with your name and your product. We'll pay you one hell of a lot of money for it. It'll all have to be legal and above board. Absolutely. That's why we have the legal legal here. He'll, uh, he'll take you through the paperwork. Then I'd like to show you some ideas I've got for some TV commercials. There's no one that much here, really. Just uh, three letters of intent for Mr. Dobson to sign. Right. There you go, sir. On the dotted line, please. Don't you think we ought to take them home to go over them? No, no, oh, hold on a minute. I don't get it. I thought you just said that... Uh, Mr. Gruber flies off to New York this evening. He's meeting with our president tomorrow. The president's a very impatient man. We wouldn't want him to go cold in this deal, would we? Albert, you check the wording on those papers, you'll see it's merely a memorandum of understanding. He will sign. I can't read or write. <clears throat> Albert, are you telling me that you've built up what's going to be part of an international multi-million dollar business and you can't read or write? Wow. <laughs> Ain't that something? Boy, what would you be now if you'd been able to? I can tell you that, Elmer. I'd still be the verger of the local parish church.
Excuse me, I'm, I'm a little short-sighted. Could you tell me what that sign says? Uh, Lisa, sir. And the agents? Uh, Wallace and Coon. Why don't you get yourself some glasses? Thank you. Did you leave the letter? Yes, I did. I saw the vicar, too. What did he say? <laughs> I conveyed to him what I thought of him. Oh, Victoria Barnes. Um, do you remember the teas we used to serve in the old days when his lordship had company? You won't see the like of them nowadays. All people have is shop cakes in front of the telly. Tea out of bags. Plastic on the table instead of Irish linen. His lordship always liked to start with cucumber sandwiches. Crumpets and muffins in the winter. And should be toast when he came back from hunting. Hot butter tea cakes with cinnamon. Brandy snaps with cream filling. My macaroons. Meringues. Eclairs. Do you know there's nowhere anywhere near the high street where you can get a decent cup of tea, let alone a proper tea like we're talking of? No one wants it. They're rushing home from the supermarket to switch on the video. Well, I don't know. After all, this is a tourist town, you know. Lots of Americans and coach parties. I, um, I saw an empty shop today. All oh, right. Yeah. Between the cathedral and the castle. It was a short lease. I went to the agent's. What are you talking about? Just for a moment, we have something to say to you. Very good, sir. Uh, Mrs. Dobson, would you join us? I asked two of our church wardens to be present because what I have to say is the result of a joint decision, not mine alone. You understand that? Yes, sir. They were as surprised as I had been to hear what I had to tell them. I have discovered, and how I found out doesn't matter, I have discovered that you, Mr. Dobson, can neither read nor write. Well, the last vicar knew that, sir. He said it didn't make any difference. Have you ever tried to learn to read? I started in service when I was a lad, sir. You didn't need to read and write to clean shoes and polish the silver. I rose to be a butler, sir, to Lord Wisborough. My wife was his cook. After we got married, she tried to teach me. And he could have learned, but he had too much to do. Well, Mr. Dobson, this may have been all right in the past, but we have plans for this church to make it as much a community centre as a place of worship. We're putting a telephone in the crypt. Now, we'd expect our verger to help answer it, give out numbers and addresses, liaise with the social services in cases of need. I don't think that with your handicap, Mr. Dobson, you could quite manage that, could you? Are you trying to tell me, sir, that my services are no longer required? Mrs. Dobson, couldn't you have another go at teaching him? Just enough so he could take down messages and so on. Well, I... I tried to teach my wife to drive. Absolute disaster. There are classes in literacy for late learners at the Adult Education College. They're enrolling now. Won't you give it a try, Albert? Excuse me. Back already? They finish early. Write me a letter. I'm just doing my pace. Write me a letter now. Oh, four. What's up with you? I've only got one pair of hands. Just stop yarring and do what I tell you. Albert, what has got into you? That women college, that's what got into me. At my age, to be taught how to read the cat set on the mat by a chit of a girl young enough to be my granddaughter. She didn't even have the modesty to wear a brassiere. Well, that's it. I'm resigning. You what? I'm resigning as Berger. Resigning? Yes, now write that letter. Well, if you're not staying, nor am I. Treating you like this. I'll make the letter from me, too. We'd miss the church, though, after all these years. We'd go balmy, stuck here in the house all day. And I'll go balmy in that birdcage they call a college. Never. You write that letter. Ah, oh, Mr. Dobson, can I help you? I've left you a letter. Oh, well, don't rush off. Uh, tell me how your lesson went. You started today, didn't you? The letter contains my resignation and that of my wife. Oh, no, no, no. Don't let's be hasty about this. I know when I'm not wanted. Well, if that's the way you feel...
Yes. Uh, a pot of tea, please. No thought. Only mugs. Very well, a mug. <laughs> oh, no, no. You want to go back and sit with your mum now? That's the idea. Off you go. I'm not at all happy about this. I've been our virgin for 16 years. Damn good one, too. Now we've no complaints, except on this one issue, which is more of a misfortune than a failing. Mm. Shall we do without Millie? Neither of them will take it easily. This church has been their life. Page 243. Children who are too young to profess the Christian faith are baptized on the understanding that they are brought up as Christians within the family of the church. What's all this then? The plans for converting the crypt. A new man certainly gets things done. The town's changing. He'd say the church must change with it. But he won't change Albert. Yeah, Ah, uh, Mr. Dobson, would you come into the 